morning is our responsibility to engage in the word of God. It's our responsibility not to be driven by the wind. And every wind that blows, you blow with it because you go with it because you have no idea where to stand on holy ground or firm ground. And every voice you hear, which are the false prophets, you'll follow the false prophets if you don't know the word of God. If you just want your ears to be tickled, you'll follow false prophets. If you want everything to be so great and smooth all the time, and you're following false prophets. If any pastor tell you you're not going to have a rough time after you give your life to Christ, let me tell you, it's the roughest time you're going to have because you're clinging to that rugged cross. Good times, I'm going to praise the Lord. Bad times, I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we cannot be perfect, but when we pray, we must pray with him honestly and tell him how we feel. Mighty God, I'm disappointed. I'm stressed out. And you're telling me to praise you? He wants you to be honest because he knows exactly how you're feeling. I just lost my child. I just lost my baby. And the pastor is telling me to praise you and rejoice. I can't rejoice. But then when you're aware of the word, you back up and say, wait a minute. Then you're saying Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I'll never leave you nor forsake you because you're in the word. You're in the word. Then you're saying Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Do not be afraid. Be of good courage. Because I'll always be with you. Is the Lord be with you? Is he your back? Is he have your back? And he said in Deuteronomy chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 and 8. Do not be afraid. I, the Almighty God, is going ahead of you. I'm going ahead of you. I'm going to clear the hurdles for you. I'm never leaving nor forsaking you. Are you excited about that this morning, church, or when you engage in the word of God? How powerful it might be. How can I get a report that I have cancer and rejoice? We are going to face those difficult times. We're going to uh, uh, encounter stressfulness. We're going to have times that we wish sometimes to myself, I wish like I won't live. I don't want to live today. I wonder how that family feel when that mother and father lost their two sons that were drowned recently, two children. Why don't you try to put that shoes on right now? And at their funeral, they were saying, in all our problems, in all our loss, our God will always do things that are in our best interest. We don't have any Pentecostal people in here. We don't have any Holy Ghost folks that said, oh, God, we're God of what we're going through. We're God of what we're going through. God will always do it for our best interest. And then he can say to you when you pray, God, I know I don't understand this. And he will say amen too. There are many things in our life we'll never understand. But I can tell you, there's a man who was crucified on a cross who understands all of our problems, understands what we're going through, and he's going to fix it in our best interest. Yeah. All we have to be is obedient. All we have to be is obedient. You're here this morning because you're obedient. Can you take a clap for yourself because God wants us to say you're here. They could have stayed home. There are many other distractions. Isn't it, isn't it something? If it's raining Monday to Saturday, we'll go to work. If it's snowing, we'll go to work. 
if a car has a flat tire, we'll call Uber or Lyft and go to work. And when Sunday morning comes, be, you begin to pull sheets and blankets. It's the truth. I get up every morning so early, but come Sunday morning, I'm still the pastor. Boy, that seems real sweet. I don't want to get on my bed. I don't want to. But then the Lord said, boy, you better go. You're the pastor. You have no excuse. So the devil is always at work. The devil is always stealing. That's all why our Lord said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, cast all your cares upon me because I care. And verse 8. He cares because the devil is always roaming, trying to devour Christian. We have got to stay in the word. We have got to know what the Bible says to keep on solid, firm ground. Without it, we're going to be destroyed. That's why the sermon says, can we read that together? Obedience to God. Let's say that again. Because I love it. It sounds good. Obedience to God. Not Pastor Malcolm. Not man. Not your husband. Not your wife. Not your children. Oh, church. Obedient to whom? God. Obedient to whom? God. So Pastor, you're working me this morning. Can you say that? Say it. So, uh, when you say that, Pastor, you're really working me this morning. I'm tired of clapping, Pastor. Can you say that? I'm tired of clapping. Will you stand with me, please? <laughs> Come on, let's give him praise. <laughs> Sister Daly, you'll forgive me because you have the baby in your life. Keep sitting. Those are the simple things we do in life by just having devotion and reading the Bible. By calling someone and say, Sister Marcia, and you're not feeling well. And you just lost your loved one. Just want to let you know I have your back. Those are the things that make God Almighty. <laughs> Obedience. Simple in the back. Did anyone bring anyone to church this morning? Raise your hand if you did. You brought someone. Put it up. Be proud of it. All the way up. Those are the things that bring our Lord God Almighty glory and honor. The small things that matter more to him. That bring smile to his face. Many of us are challenged always to do great things. What matters is to tell someone thank you. Thank you. Or when you check out the cash register. Don't worry about if they took a little extra money, whatever happens there. When you get your groceries and you walk out, say, God bless you. Yes. The little things like that, you don't know what the exact cashier might be going through. Yes. That's why when I check out that Costco, I'm a Costco boy now. Yes. And when I bring my receipt up, those that, anybody here go to Costco? No, you're a good Christian. You don't go to Costco. Oh, I love to go to Costco. That's bad therapy. I'm going to say it again. It relaxes me. Oh, shut up, <laughs> I got an honest Christian in the house. There's some people when they're depressed, they go what? Shopping. And then when they finish shopping, they begin to worry about the bill. <laughs> oh, Lord, what a fun we're having here today. The little things. And when I give them my receipt, church, wait a little the devil tell you it's time I sit down. You know that's what he's telling you right now? We have got to get the Bible and understand. No people, let me tell you, the devil don't want us to praise the Lord. Can we drive him out of our mind? Let's put it, let's just say, no, I rebuke it. I'm going to give my God praise this morning. Let me go back to shopping, okay? The woman at the door, check it, she look at my car. I said, oh, Lord, I've not paid for everything down here. I'm a pastor. What if she called the manager and said, the cashier that missed something here and, 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 and this one. And when she does that, she gives me the receipt. 
I say, God bless you. She said, oh, Lord, I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the small thing that matters. Please receive that now before you're given the black eyes. God cares about the small things that we do for each other. For each other. This is the last time you thank someone for cooking a meal for you. Hope you say thanks. Even if the biscuit is burned, you should say thank you, Lord. For giving the burnt biscuit this morning. We must have to re re examine ourselves. I'm sorry to tell you, but every meal since we were married 52 years, Sister Malcolm and I. Wait a minute. I didn't get an applaud for that. <laughs> you know some people can't live for more than two years together. I said 52. Can I get another? That little applaud for 52 years are the little things we must do for each other. We must is it? See, many people don't understand. God, people will never see the small things you do. They will go unnoticed. But I can tell you, a man from Nazareth, someone who cares, someone who loves us, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Maker, our Creator, His name is Almighty God. He sees and knows your name. Small acts of kindness is what God cares about. Small things, all those things that we do in church, bringing someone to church, God sees it and knows that. It brings worship to him, bring a smile on his face. But it were difficult to go yonder and pick up someone and give them a ride because they can't afford Uber or Lyft. When someone have their children and they have an errand to run, but they know they can't take the baby to the place they're going. And they say, bring the children. I know they're going to give me a lot of problems today. Even when they're away with the children, it's, oh, Lord, what a, I'm going to have a rough time. Oh, you don't do that. You know children are coming. is a responsibility. Babies are coming. is a responsibility. But I want to tell you, when I do those acts of silence, it becomes God's glory. It glorifies him. Delight. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. It's those small acts. The things that nobody noticed. So what God is talking about. He says obedience to God is more important than tithes and offerings. More important than what church? My family more important than what? Tithes and offerings. Don't stop giving now, okay? <laughs> Reverend Branson, we gotta finish strong. Because yes. I want God saying we don't want to rob God. Malachi 3, 8 and 10. He said, bring in all the money in the storehouse so I can feed my people. Yes. That don't tell you to stop giving. Is that clear? Yes. So not all vegans. But I want to read it from the New Living Translation version. Pastors and everyone, we just say obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Let us see what 1 Samuel says. Verse 15, 22. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? What is more what? Pleasing to our God. Your burnt offerings and sacrifices are your obedience to his voice. See, in those times for sin, the high priest, they have to do what they call bird offering. You bring your breast corn, wheat, barley, sheep, or goat, and you present it as a sacrifice for your sin. You had forgotten about my sermon last week. The high priest, Moses had to get Aaron ready. Because only Aaron can go in the holies of holies to speak to God. Everyone has to stay outside. You cannot even come in the center. You stay outside of the temple. 
And those times they were traveling with tabernacle in tent. And he has to be put on new clothes, go and take a shower, everything. Then he has to be anointed with the blood of that animal before he could see or talk to God himself. And then there'll be a burnt offering. You remember Cain and Abel? Everyone, I'm going to bring it back. Cain and Abel. Who gave the best gift? Abel, right? He gave the best unblemished lamb to present it to God for his offering. First sins, first forgiveness. Those times, that's what it was like. And then Cain, his own brother, just brought crumbs to the Lord. He didn't bring his best fruit, his best mango. It was in agriculture. He didn't bring all that. He didn't bring the best yam or breadfruit. Oh, you don't know about breadfruit. Papaya then. He just gave God anything. So God gave him anything. God blessed Abel, but did not bless Cain for what he gave. And what God? Jealousy? He killed his own brother. Today in the world, people are still killing people, destroying people out of jealousy. But you see, when you love our God Almighty, when you love the Lord, we don't follow our Lord under compulsion. We don't come to church under duress. We don't come to church with pastor, man, I got a gun waiting for you at your door, at your home. You come because you know that our Lord loves you and cares about you in every which way. That's why we're here this morning. To come out of obedience. To come and give him praise. We come out of a sense of gratitude. We must realize everyone in the world today. That we need to have an attitude of gratitude. When we are helped by others in the name of Jesus Christ. An attitude of gratitude to say thank you. And appreciate it. So we're here this morning in church. Because we want to have an attitude of gratitude. When's the last time you look in your bank book? <laughs> Pastor, mine is empty. He'll fill it soon. Just do what he tells you to do. When last week in our review mirror, I look at mine every day. Living in a tiny, tiny bit, two rooms. Six children and my mom. Knock each other down, sleep on the floor. Oh, when it rains, we have to put bucket to catch water. All these rich folks here don't understand what I'm talking about. I could, listen, where I sleep, I had a lakefront property. Because when I looked onto the floor, the water that come from the rain, I could see it below my floor. A waterfront property I slept in. But guess what? I gave God praise because he brought me to where I'm at today. Being obedient. Mom and dragged me every day to church. I know I see why. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Because our Lord God Almighty sees everything and he knows our name. He says, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices are your obedience to his voice. Listen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than offering the fat of rams. We can never, ever, never, ever. Uh, it sounds good. I want to say it again. We can never, never, never sound like a little boy in the corner. Oh, mama, let me have my toy. Let me have my toy. I, we can never, ever serve God without faith. That's in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We can never serve him. We have got to believe. That's what faith means, believe. The things that we hope for, we have never seen. What the Reverend Grant says, 14 years ago when we came here, all was though there was just land. Anyone lived in Pepper Pines for a while? There's nothing there. 
And God, you have to come in this ball for the first time I came to pray. So, Betty, do we have a witness in the house? Yes. Almighty God said to me, but he said, David didn't do it. And all those people, brother and grand, is right now my sermon. And I didn't call it that in my sermon. Holy Spirit is one. He speaks to everyone the same way together. Amen. And I came up here and says, I've heard from Sister Betty and his, her husband told me. That's when we should have been out of this building five years ago. They were going nearly 24 years. Yes. And when I came to the prophet, I says, God says, I said, we are going to build my first sermon, Solomon Temple. Look what God has done. We are going to build. Since I really heard that, you're here the first sermon I preached. And many of us witnesses, if I call too many names, I get black eyed because I'm going to forget someone. I'm not going to call any more names. Pastor, don't let me call any more names. Go to the black eye. You can take black eye, God. I, I'm human. I can't handle it. You must understand what God cares about. God cares about us loving each other. God cares about us being good to each other. God cares more about us loving each other than anything else. There are two things that God cares about. I have scripture to back it up. The death of his son, Jesus Christ, that he sent for redemption for our sins. And the second thing, you can tell anyone, the second thing that God cares about more than anything else, he cares about us. He wants everyone to repent of their sin. He wants everyone to be in paradise with him. That's why he sent his son. That's why that day, put that, put that picture up for me. That's why that day when, he, when Jesus Christ was baptized for our sin, when he wanted to start his ministry. At 12 years old, that's why I go here, let us focus on what God has placed in my heart to remind everyone right now. I remember I'm not reading or seeing anything, so I'll let the Holy Ghost speak through my vocal cord and tell me what to be said. There are many things that I plan to say will not be said unless he says so, because he has to remind me. Because I can do all things through Christ, what? Christ. All things. At 12 years old, our Lord Jesus Christ, Went to Jerusalem. You remember Moses when he left the Egypt? You remember the pain of the blood and all of a sudden the angel of death will pass over those who were obedient? That Passover is going on to this day. That's how it started. So they will leave from Galilee. They will leave from Nazareth where he was born. And they will head to Jerusalem for the what? The pass over. Every year. This 12-year-old went with his mother and his father, Mary and Joseph, and with other people in the village. Like they're going on a retreat together. And when the pastor was over in the celebration, you remember Jesus rode on a donkey that day before they crucified him? The pastor to let you do the same scene while he was there. When he became older in his ministry. But as a little boy at 12 years old, 12 years old. When the parents almost got back to their home, walked many miles. I said, where is Jesus? They thought Jesus was amongst the crowd. You know that happened to some people. I've known people go with each other in the church and when they get up and say, where's John? <laughs> Left them right there. That happened, yes. Why do you think, since God gave me that, do you remember how many people Babies have died in a car. Let me try to remember if you don't realize the Bible is real. Anyone ever heard of babies' death in a car? Parents went into the store and forget the babies are there. 
Oh, they didn't drop all the baby, and the husband normally don't drop all the babies, the mother. And that one day he took the baby and he went to his office. He's worried about all the things that were over and left the child, the child die, right? I'm sure in reality. So they were traveling and said, Where is Jesus? Three days. Could you mean the stress that Jesus gave his parents? He was human, but God, I'm going to say it again. So we begin to love God more. He still was God, but was still in human flesh like us. Those parents were what? Were they happy? And I, I'm talking to everyone. Were they happy, parents? They were not, they were what? Angry, depressed, worried. I think they were dreaming that the, the child probably got killed already. They are worried. When they came in three days, do you have any mothers and fathers in there? Just raise your hand. Could you imagine missing your children somewhere for three days? You're searching for them. Do you understand why we have the missing report of children being missing still by the FBI? Look at Honor when Mary and Joseph found Jesus. He was in the temple, in the synagogue, talking to all these prophets and the scribes. These were scribes were men who interpret Hebrew and wrote it in their own language. And he was in conversation with them. And you did get better now. I get to tell your neighbor, our pastor's going somewhere. Get better now. Remember, parent, you're what? Angry! But I said, boy, I couldn't hear it. Boy! You know, you're stressed this out. Do you know we're looking for three days? And Joseph and Jesus are saying, call me. A 12-year-old now, to his parents. Don't you know I have to be about my father's business? Boy, if that was me, my mama would have break my teeth out. My teeth is scattered all over the place. I'm worried of you all. Don't you know I have to be my father's business? Anyone grow me those type of home? My, I would have teeth now. My mama would slap that out of my head. I would try to pick it up when she's done. But at age 12 in the Bible, nothing more was spoken about Jesus Christ. Nothing. Until he became of this age. When he was 30 years old. 18 years blank in the Bible. Nothing more in his life. And he came to be baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. You know, yes, but John had refused almost to baptize him. And while he was being baptized, come on, everyone knows that. A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased with. My beloved son. God was pleased with him for his obedience while he was living with his parents. Because it says very simple in Luke chapter 2 verse 51 it says after he was found in the temple the Bible finishes that story by saying in fifth, verse 51, I'm going to repeat again you find this in Luke chapter 2 Verses 1 all the way to 52. I'm just going to do 51 and 52. At the end of that, finding Jesus 12, the Bible says, Dr. Luke wrote to say this way. And Jesus grew up being obedient to his parents. And 52 says, and he grew in stature and in the wisdom, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. In that moment, that was when you see not three people, but one. You had God the Father who spoke from heaven. You have the devil who is the Holy Spirit. And you have Jesus Christ present. 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're all one. Can we give God praise and they're all one, not three. God, no, not one fake or pretenders. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, when you pray, you pray to God how you feel with respect. God is not our equal, but he's still God our Father and our best friend. Friend cares about each other. Friend cares about the things each other cares about. Marriages will never last if you don't care about things for each other. Never. Children will not, grandchildren will never love their parents or grandparents unless they care about things each other cares about. Our God wants us to care about what he cares about. So Mark he cares about the way you treat your sister and your children and your grands. Brother Cohen, you just came and gave me your name a couple seconds ago. He cares about my knowing your name. You're not a number in this church. He cares for the Eric and brother and, brother and sister Faith for inviting someone to church. What God cares about for each of us to tell each other the good news about eternal life by knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Not going around and not bragging. We need to brag about the Lord Jesus Christ. When I wrote to, an, to my HOA, they found out I'm a pastor. I said, oh, praise the Lord. I didn't disguise it. I said, yes, I'm doing God's work. She said, boy, that's heavy work. I went to the shopping center and the woman said, well, you're a pastor. God bless you because I know what you're going through. But what we're talking about was calling the name of Jesus Christ as all. We need to talk more about our Lord to each other, yeah. to our children, to our grandchildren, to our neighbors. Yeah. Even if you can get black eyes sometimes. Yeah. They're going to embarrass you sometimes. They're going to insult you. Yeah. Don't stop. Stand on firm ground and call the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If you're calling him for your problem, why can't you tell someone about him? Yeah. Yeah. This HOA lady. I didn't know she was a child of God when I sent her an email. She said, Pastor, she no longer called me by my name. She said, Pastor, don't, I don't know. I've never met her. But she realized I'm a pastor of a church. We need to brag that people know you're a child of God. We need to brag that people know you're a follower of the most high God. Who cares for us? Redeem us. When we call it when we are sick, when we are hurt, when we need anything. We need to brag about him and boast about him. She sent back, I didn't know she was a follower or two, but when she finished wrote writing, she put it at the bottom. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Never try to say, man, hey, Joy, hi, Pastor. Don't know her, but the point I'm making here is starting today, you have not been to it. Brag and boast about the Jesus Christ who died on the cross for every person in this room. Stop being FBI's or undercover agent. Let someone know you're a follower of Christ. Amen. Let your co worker know why are we undercover like the FBI. Matthew chapter 28, the last chapter. No, we can pick it when you get home. Make it your devotion, please. The Gospel of Matthew, the last chapter, is 28th chapter. Verses 18 to 20. To show how much God wants to obedience starting now. Being obedient to God brings worship and joy to Him. Being obedient releases blessing and healing and miracles. That went too fast. Oh, miserable like comfort. You're standing with me because I'm standing. <laughs> you know, people don't have a sense of humor anymore. I said you're standing with me because I, miserable loves company. Can we say amen? amen. God wants us to be honest about what he just told me to remind you. Miserable loves company. 
I want you to stand because I'm standing too. Aunt Peggy, will you tell them again? Well, she said once, boy, Pastor Kevin, that you're going to stand, then I got to stand. She didn't say I'm old now. She said I'm young. So don't you dare. I'm young. It's all in your head. Hey. I'm begging to say again because we have to be a good Christian. They won't say it. it's all where? In your head. All they're worrying about is to be seated. They're not going to sit down though. They're going to stand with me. You're standing with me on the holy ground. What we're doing in obedience bring joy to God. Give him more joy. I want us to understand the word. It says it brings you joy and delight and honor. Not the big things. My preaching, my preaching is not important as you making someone smile today and give them glory. My preaching is nothing compared to that small act of kindness. Just call someone and say, have a beautiful day. They're having a rough day to make their day. Where was that again? Matthew 28. 18, 20. I'm thinking they're not a good person. Remind me we have a second. Yeah. They won't be out of here, but we got to go. The last verse. The last the verse. verse. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Son of God who died for us before he ascended to heaven, he gathers his disciples together and he said, Heaven and earth, your authority, you give me authority. I have the authority. I have the power. I have the approval. Yeah. If it's sealed, that I have the authority between heaven and earth to tell everyone you're present now to make, go out and make disciples of what? Everyone. Let them be followers. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Father, today you hold us in your hand. You're an untimed God. Yes, you are. You're God our Father and our best friend. You're our creator and you're our maker. You're our king. You're our high priest. And you're our prophet. You're our Redeemer and our Savior. You're our Emmanuel. You're the God that sees everything, knows everything. Even our time of disappointment and sorrow and loss of our loved ones, as your hurts, you'll always do everything in our best interest. Today we go forth, O oh Lord, to find the lost, those who are lost, those that need to know the name of Jesus Christ. Those who need to know that he will return. They're going to build us a mansion. With his own hands. And he will return. In the twinkling of eyes. And become the archangel. And the trumpet that is blowing. And all the righteous. Saints. All those righteous. Ones who have died. Will come alive again. Their bodies will re be reunited in their spirit. And those of us who are alive will be caught up with him. And he will return. He will return. He will return. What a glorious day that's going to be. When our Lord return. What a glorious day that's going to be. When our Lord return. We now have eternal life. And let the church say amen. We're going to give God amen. praise and honor. And glory in Jesus' name.